Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is the Top Delinquent, Chapter 27, and this one is titled Chez. What the hell are these things? You thought as you pulled out a box of chocolate profiteroles. What the heck's a profiterole? Suddenly the lights were flicked on, the soft light flooding the kitchen and revealing your fridge prowling form to the newcomer. Yun, Eda's startled voice behind you yelped, making you drop the box of custard packed balls with surprise as you turned and toppled over onto your backside. Sorry, you blurted out. I, I, I was hungry and, um, you missed dinner, Eda said sternly as he walked over to you. Eating a good, well-balanced meal is important. I fell asleep, dummy, that's why I didn't eat. I didn't even know dinner was happening, he replied with a hangry pout. That's why I'm here now, balls deep in stuff I can't even pronounce the names of. Yin, your language, Eda said with an appalled look on his face. Listen, bro, I need food. Where the hell's the cheese? He says you pulled yourself up and squared off with him. Eda backed down with surprise. You did seem to be very easily riled right now, so he conceded and stepped gingerly around you to help find something for you to eat. Would Roquefort suffice? He asked as he leaned into the fridge and pulled out a fancy packed cheese. I don't even know what that is, but yes, you deadpanned, taking it from him. Wait, he said, turning to the pantry doors and opening them before looking back at you. Allow me to provide some gourmet crackers to Yin! You had ripped the fancy packaging open and taken a bite out of the side of the cheese, chewing on it methodically as your palate deciphered the flavours. Eda's soul nearly left his body as he let out a silent scream of utter disbelief, shock and horror that he had just bitten into the side of a very expensive French cheese without even so much as a second thought. What? Well, you deadpanned with a cheek full when you saw the look on his face. You, you, you just, he stammered arms flailing wildly as he tried to collect himself before speaking again. It's cheese. It is not cheese. This is Roquefort. Why are you saying it all fancy and stuff? That is how it's pronounced. You want some? You asked calmly as he continued to have a panic attack that only seemed to register on his face and arm. I... This... Yin, I... Out with it, Eda. What's your issue? You asked, confused by his mortified expression. You... Just bit into Roquefort, like it was a bagel, he wheezed, catching his breath after every few words. I'm hungry, okay, and it's pretty good, he replied, not taking the situation as seriously as he was. Eda pinched the bridge of his nose and took some deep breaths in as he took another mouthful and watched him. Stop. Put it down, he said in an unnervingly calm voice. Okay, he said as he went to place it down on the kitchen bench without a plate. No! With a plate! He said, pulling a similar face to before. God, Eda, calm down! He said with an amused chuckle as he quickly pulled a plate out from the cupboard nearby you. I feel better already, okay? Thank you for the cheese. Eda paused in his frantically skittish movements and looked at you, softening when you smiled a little at him. You're welcome, Yin. He said as he pushed his glasses back up onto his nose and collected himself. Um, so why are you here? Are you hungry too? You asked, nodding towards the fridge. Um, no. I I was getting something else, he said, clearing his throat a few times and avoiding eye contact. You're acting sus, Eda, what's up? You asked as you took a step towards him. He took a step back quickly and hid his arm behind his back, his movements drawing your attention. What's up with your arm? You asked, pointing to it. Nothing, he lied. Don't lie to me, give me your arm. Please, I do not wish to concern you. Eda said softly as he kept his arm out of reach. Give me your arm. That is an order, Eda, he said authoritatively, grabbing his sleeve as your body bumped into his front. He looked down at you bashfully and carefully gave you his arm, and you saw immediately the bruise that was there and the angle of his arm. Eda, you gasped with horror. Your arm's broken. We need to call the ambulance. Please, he said as he tried to pull his arm away. It is just a small bruise. I will just look for an ice pack. Small bruise? This is friggin' the size of Texas, man. That is very much an exaggeration, Yin. No, it's not. Look at the thing. And it's definitely broken too. Is it throbbing? Yes, he said softly. But this is a small price to pay for your well-being and safety. I do not mind. Eda, I know when something's broken. I've been in this situation many times. You need to have it x-rayed. It is the middle of the night, Yin. It can wait till morning, Eda pleaded. Why, Eda? Why? Why me? Why did you do this for me? Why all this? 
It should have been me that got hit. You didn't need to take it. You suddenly snapped, tears flooding down your face as you let go of his arm and hugged him around his middle. He didn't reply. He just cuddled you back, unsure of what to say at that point. He desperately wanted to confess his feelings, but he also didn't want to put any pressure on you to reply favourably, so just instead kept quiet. The sound of footsteps broke your little meltdown, and you quickly let go of him and turned away, just as Tensi arrived on scene. I thought I heard talking, he said smugly. What's going on in here? I heard the words broken and arm in the same sentence, mind you, and decided to investigate. Brother, I am fine, Ida said. It is just a bruise, and I was looking for an ice pack. Let me see, Tensi said as he walked over to his younger brother and took his arm in hand to inspect it. Yeah, it's broken. Go and wake up the doctor. Wait, what? Wake up the doctor? You asked with confusion written all over your face as you wiped your tears from your eyes. Don't we need to call the hospital? We have a doctor on site, Tensi said. Oh, of course, you deadpanned. The completely normal, everyday thing. Call your on-site doctor. I can move my fingers, Ida said, still trying to argue with his older brother. Tenya, your fingers are swollen and blue. Go to Dr. Hawamacha, he said sternly. I'll come too, better yet, I'll take him there, he said quickly, taking Ida's good arm and dragging him to the kitchen door. And there ends chapter 27. This was a favourite chapter for those who remember it on Wattpad, the cheese scene. A bit of an iconic scene for this book. Stay tuned for chapter 28. I'll see you tomorrow.